Hi, welcome to Yogi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Today, you guys, this is a very special video and the introduction is gonna be just a little bit different because before we get into the video, I would like to announce that this video is the start of a brand new series on my channel. I am very, very excited to announce the start of the Expert and the Expat series on Yogi's Home. What is the Expert and the Expat series? This series is um, something that I hope to post about once a month where I will have a guest expert uh, on my channel to talk about a topic that they're an expert in. I really want to bring you guys like good quality information. Your questions are always so thoughtful and good um, and sometimes I'm not the best person to answer them. However, I have a lot of friends and my friends are all quite clever and not just friends but also people in my network people i've worked with in the past and, and gotten to know so and also i would like to hear what kind of topics you would like to do a deep dive in um in the future on this series um the expert and the expat so um that's it i'm gonna try to post one of these videos every month so like once per month we'll do one of these um shows and i hope that you guys like them I also wanted to ask you guys if, so not only if you have a topic that you would like me to cover, which please leave them in the comments below, but maybe you are an expert in something that you think would benefit the viewers of my channel. If you are an expert in something, you can be Dutch, you can be foreign, you can be whatever, but if you would like to be an expert on this series, please do email me and let me know what you're an expert in, what is a topic that you would like to share with the audience, and then we can talk about it um, if it's a good fit. So that's it. No more introduction about the series. Now we are going to actually get into the very first episode. Thank you guys so much. and I hope you like it. Hi, welcome to Yogi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Today, as you guys heard, is a very special day. We are launching the Expert and the Expat series. And this is our very first expert. Tiroj, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for <laughs> inviting me. Hello, everyone. So nice to be on this channel. Hello, viewers of Yogi's <laughs> Home. Uh, so as she said, I'm her neighbor, but I'm also an HR business partner for um, a big international company uh, here in the Netherlands, but also actually in every other country, mm -hmm. in every country almost across the world. I work for Unilever. So I thought maybe it's nice to give you uh, a little bit of an insight of how things work in the application process from an HR point of view and maybe give you as expats tips on how it works for the Netherlands because there might be some differences compared to your home country. Yeah. So that's what this video is about. Yeah, and actually, you know what, Tidosh, we have a lot of Dutch viewers too. So these are also going to be tips that our Dutch viewers can use for yeah. improving their own yeah. CVs and cover letters and then maybe getting a new job or an improvement in their own jobs. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I'm also not the expert, 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 because I will tell you all about it from my HR point of view, but I'm not a recruiter. So of course, recruiters can tell you much more. So I try to keep it as general as possible. And if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments below and either Jovi or I will get back to you. Sounds like a plan. Yay! Yay. Okay. So let's start. So our first question, or my first question is, can you tell us a little bit about the process of applying for a job in the Netherlands, um, especially a, a, like a Dutch job or an international job, a, a job based in the Netherlands, can you give us like a little bit of an overview? Yeah, good question. <laughs> so for the company that I work for, we don't really have things like an IQ test. We do tests for the traineeship assessments. The traineeships are really a big deal here in the Netherlands, especially for the top companies. Um, but that's more for graduates or people with less work experience because the traineeship then really develops you in the program. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But for the general jobs, there's no thing like a big IQ test for the company that I work for, which I think is really a bonus because then you don't need to prove yourself based on a test. Um, but it is required to send in your CV and a motivation letter or cover letter. And in terms of the CV, I recommend you to make it as personal as possible. 
Some countries, they have the rule that you don't put date of birth or general information like address or even a picture. But here in the Netherlands, it's actually quite normal to add your date of birth, to add a picture, a nice picture <laughs> as well. And you can laugh on the picture, make it wow. just that. <laughs> Something about you. Um, and I think the top tip that I can give is add a little bit of text at the top of your resume mm -hmm. about yourself. So who are you? What is your passion? What are your hobbies? What's your purpose eh? we talk a lot about purpose nowadays in companies company purposes but also an individual purpose so it makes you tick what is it that you what, what you love to wake up in the morning for what gives you energy so if you can summarize that in a little bit eh? and then the top text above the resume before everything follows everyone can read in a couple of sentences already who you are what you stand for you can even talk about your values that you have you know, what you find important in a company, it can give a good impression um, about who you are and how you would fit with that company. That's a really interesting, <clears throat> for me to hear, because that is the complete opposite of something that you would do on an American CV, for example, or resume. So yeah. tell us more. What yes. else? Yeah, that's great. Yes. Thank yeah, you. I think it's especially nowadays when you really can uh, distinct yourself by the diverse factor, like what makes you unique. Yeah. That's really what's important in companies. And I think that each company wants that uniqueness, that diversity to work in their benefit. So the better you can show off what makes you unique, the better the company knows what they can what they can get basically when they hire you. Mm. So that little summary is really important. And then of course you can start with the facts and date of birth you can definitely add. Even if you don't add it, usually we can make the sum like, okay, they <laughs> went to high school in this year. <laughs> they graduated in that year. We know their age approximately. Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable, of course, you can take it out. I think it's not, uh, not a big deal. Uh, but the picture is definitely important because it's an eye catcher. You want your resume to stand out in the pile of 60, mm. 50, 100 resumes, of course. Yeah. I think that's definitely an eye uh, catcher. And then the factual stuff can come on like uh, school education skills but try to keep it short no one has time to read pages of <laughs> pages of after pages of resumes especially as i said if the recruiter has a bunch of them they will be, need to be able to scan it within two minutes uh, and also the manager then eh? the manager gets a pile of cvs they don't have time to read although it's, it has to be very interesting of course everything you did it, they don't have time to do it if you could say like what page maximum should somebody 30s, 40s, let's yes. say somebody that has some yeah. experience, yeah. how long max would you recommend a CV to be? Two pages. Two pages. Two pages, okay. definitely. Including you your, the... picture, your picture, your paragraph about who you are, what makes you tick, what drives you, and then you can do a summary of every everywhere you work, but make it short and add also not just where you work, but also what you did and what you were responsible for, just in a couple of sentences. No one needs to know what kind of Excel reports you made. <laughs> just keep it general, what you were responsible for, because you can also share in the interview once you're invited uh, what you exactly did. And I think I see nowadays a lot of resumes, you can find templates as well on the internet, that they are short and nice and, and cool and sexy, where you can have either on, on one page, like a timeline, eh? mm -hmm. what you did, and on the left side, maybe your skills. Some people even add little stars, like I'm a four out of five in PowerPoint, or I'm a oh, four wow. out of five in English. Yes, you can make it as crazy as you can. Try to be creative. Uh, nowadays, people also make their resumes in PowerPoint, where you can uh, play a little bit with the layout. <laughs> yes, this is really next level. Yeah. Um, so I, I can actually share my resume with people as an example. Shall we do that? Yeah, you we will leave a... Um, I will figure out how to do that. Yeah. I will leave a description in the yes we below. Can you can have yeah. a look. Have yeah. a look. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, uh, our traineeship selection process is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and in that whole process, we actually don't look at resume at all. So the CV doesn't come back at all in the whole process, which is how really interesting. It's really interesting. It's really new. So this process is a global process within Unilever, which we've been doing for the past two years now. Um, the trainee selection in Netherlands goes open twice a year. Uh, and twice a year we get so many resumes, hundreds, so sometimes even more than 1,000 per cycle. Wow. 
Yeah, we have different functional traineeships yeah. like marketing, finance, and so on. It's really popular. Um, and it doesn't make sense to, for the recruiter to go through all the resumes one by one. And also, there could also be bias, eh? because you read the resume based on who you are, based on your own perception. So to get rid of all of that and also to simplify our lives, basically, in HR, we came up with a new process, a digital process, fully digital in the first three steps, which is really interesting. Um, and the CV actually never is shown during the whole process. Wow. Um, the trainees are invited, um, so they uh, sign up and uh, there's a match made with their LinkedIn profiles. Then they get a link, so all the information is already there from LinkedIn. Then they get a link to start the assessment and it starts with digital games. So it's, it's playing a game, actually. That's part of fun. The, yeah, it is. <laughs> It is, it is fun. It's playing games and based on the games, um, there is a, a IA, so artificial intelligence that can judge how you do on all the different elements of the game and it judges your characteristics. So how well do you take risks? How well are you dealing with the, with the speed of information uh, and so on, that kind of thing. And those characteristics are then matched against the values that we have as a company, our standards of leadership to see if you, know, you cannot take all the boxes of course, but to see if uh, the expectations are met. And then after that, um, the uh, applic uh, applicants get um, interview questions, but again, no CV, but also now the recruiter is involved. It's also artificial intelligence. They can answer the interview <laughs> questions by recording it on their phone, on their iPhone or whatever. So they get the questions and there's a certain amount of time in which you can record the video, upload the video, and then artificial intelligence <laughs> scans the answers. It's really cool. It scans the answers and based on those two rounds then they are invited for a face-to-face -face assessment center and only then we get to see them live uh, but also not a cv involved we will never ask them about their cvs it's really about skills who potential who they are if the characteristics and the values match the company and i think that's the future uh, we're not there yet to do it with all the vacancies we do have some vacancies where we try to experiment with the, um, the video recording um, of answers. So you can uh, say the answer in your own time where you feel comfortable in your own home, get to think about it and then reply. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. so people are uh, the best they can be basically in their own feeling comfortable. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 When I think about some of the jobs that I interviewed for in international criminal law, where you have a panel of like three to five people on a conference call oh. in wherever the, the <laughs> tribunal is and then you're wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then they're asking you very specific questions like which article of the statute covers this thing and you're just like, ah. Uh. Uh, yeah. And really, you can never put your best foot forward in that kind of situation. So this is really interesting yeah, to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, you don't feel like yourself because also in what life situations do you sit there with like five people <laughs> judging you? Never. So it will never occur again. And it's not based on your potential or any future focus skills. It's based on historical or maybe at that moment it's a snapshot. And maybe you don't feel so well, you don't remember, you get a blackout, it's really a snapshot yeah. on that moment. So I think it's best to look at skills, values, potential, purpose, mm -hmm. and future focus rather than uh, a test on knowledge uh, or mem memory, basically, sometimes as yeah. well. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. That's yeah. wow. Like I'm yeah. blown away by yeah. this. So it's lots so of things happening yeah. in the field of HR and especially uh -huh. recruitment, yeah. and digitalization, of course, but also the use of. AI, artificial intelligence to uh, yeah help us. Now, uh, if we can just take a step back, mm. uh, can you tell us maybe some of the biggest mistakes that you think people make mm. when applying for jobs? Yeah, I think uh, in the cover letter, uh, the biggest mistake would be not to make it personal or not to address it to the company you're working for, so to keep it actually too general, mm. um, uh, instead of really apply at the, focusing it on the role that you're applying for. So for example, if you're uh, applying for a communication role in a specific field, mm. say why that specific field uh, motivates you and why your uh, experience links to that, rather than to say, I would like to work in communications, which is too general. Everyone who's applying for that role likes mm -hmm. to work in communication. But what makes it that we should pick you and why is your motivation more suitable than other people's motivation? What is the unique factor that you have? 
Um, sometimes I see interesting CVs where people talk about that throughout their childhood they were, uh, really grew up with the products of Unilever and that's what made them love the company as well. And it's really interesting because it immediately uh, focuses your attention to that person and that person's unique uh, experience with maybe mm -hmm. the brand or the company. Um, I think that makes it really engaging and of course if you apply for different companies you can then personalize it based on the company you worked for. What I also sometimes see on CVs is that they change the coloring based on the company that they are applying for, which is also smart, I think. That's really cool. Yeah, make it blue for KLM or make it uh, whatever color, yeah. name or brand. Uh, red for Coca-Cola. Red for Coca-Cola, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. good improvising. Yeah. <laughs> for example, yeah, yeah, which is I think also smart because then it catches the attention. Um, and also what uh, some of the examples I see is that they have really long resumes mm -hmm. of like five, six pages. I think everyone has, of course, had an interesting work experience, mm -hmm. but time is also as essential as we said in the beginning. And then it just people just lose focus and don't know what is the key that you want to deliver. Um, so I think that uh, is also a good tip. Okay, let's say that we followed all of your tips. Yes. We've got a great CV, a great cover letter. Yeah. We nailed the AI portion, obviously, <laughs> and the interview. And now we are, we have a job offer yeah. with a certain salary. Yeah. And maybe we're even happy with that salary, but is it worth it to try to get more? And if you want to get more, how do you do how that? How do you do it? Yeah, it's a smart question. <laughs> Uh, it also depends on the company you work for. Uh, it depends in two ways, either at the start of the interview process or towards the very end. Because some companies, the recruiter will ask you at the very start already, what is your salary expectation? Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, everyone wants to improve on the previous job that they had. Mm -hmm. So so be honest. And, and if your salary is, let's say, 1,000 euros per month, don't go and say it's 12,000 because also no one will believe you because they know the market. They do benchmarking on salary. They know the market. But I think it would be fair if you could say, okay, it's 1,300. So they know a little bit that you want to improve and mm -hmm. keeps it still realistic. You're not lying. Mm -hmm. You just have, they say, what's your expectation? So if your expectation is higher, tell them that. Other companies will not do it at the start. They can do it at the end. And then it also depends on which company you uh, apply for. Some companies have per role fixed salary grades and there's no movement between the grades. Uh, for us, we do have uh, movement. So you have a grade and then there's a skill and the skill can go from low to high. And within that, there's a freedom um, within the skill based on experience and so on. But also, again, don't make unrealistic um, uh, um, statements because we know how the market looks like. <laughs> But um, definitely try to go for it. If you think uh, you would like to see yourself at a higher salary, mm -hmm. go for it from the beginning. Because if you you have the job and then after three, four months, you feel like, mm, I should have raised the salary point. It's a little bit weird if you say that because you just accepted the offer. Mm -hmm. So try to do it at the offer. And if you uh, try and you don't get it, at least you tried. And at least then they know about your expectation because if then uh, a salary round or change round does come up, they knew that, oh yeah, from the beginning you had raised uh, your hand and said, oh, I, I wished it was a bit higher because my expectation was that it was a bit higher. Yeah. 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 Do you think that you could ask, for example, if there is no room to negotiate on your salary, that you could ask for like one extra day off? Is that something that's that happens, or that's just mm -hmm. like a no? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't advise to um, ask for those things because it's not a. If it's not in the collective labor agreement, right. or if it's not a fixed. Yeah, then it's an agreement between you and the line manager. Maybe if that person leaves, you have nothing, basically no paper trail, no really. Yeah? Yeah. But you can ask for training, for example. And I do see that happening. People joining the company saying, hey, I have this on my wish list to do a training, maybe in uh, marketing or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, can you as a company invest in me if I join your company to go to this training? And then you do have something on paper. You do have something mm -hmm. fixed which you can then go do in the future. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 Working from home, maybe you can have that as a check uh, instead of a day off that you uh, say, okay, can I work maybe an afternoon from home or once every whatever time from home when uh, the workload uh, requires that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. So there's lots of other things that you can negotiate things, and, yeah. and not ask just for. salary. Yeah, that's very interesting. And actually, the new generation, I think, is much more now thinking about development opportunities rather than just pay. Of course, you need pay. We all need to be paid to pay and to do to live our lives, basically. Uh, but things like training, development, uh, courses, workshops, that kind of a thing, I think, is really important now. Great. Yeah. Great. Um. Tirosh, can I ask you, we're going to switch a little bit again, and I'm going to share a small personal detail about you, and that is that you had a baby recently, yes. <laughs> and when we were talking about you going back to work after your maternity leave, you shared a, a strategy with me that I just thought was genius for moms. <laughs> you give me too much credit. No, I've never heard that before, mm -hmm. and you guys, can you let us know in the comments if you think Tirosh's plan was genius, because <laughs> honestly, this is... Okay. Yeah. So a lot of new moms, when they're going back to work, they'll you know finish their maternity leave and then they'll come back and say, well, I'd like to work um, mm -hmm. four days a week and have one, uh, what is it? Outer shops for Outer shops for love, parental yeah. leave. Yeah. One parental leave day. And so they leave right away from their maternity leave going into four days a week. I asked you if you were going to do that and what was your answer? Yeah, no, I said no. <laughs> because, uh, so I went back to work three months ago um, and I was off for six months, which is a little bit longer than the standard maternity leave of 16 weeks here in the Netherlands. And I completely forgot what it was like to be working. I completely, what do I do at work? I completely <laughs> forgot. What's my life? Like, what is, <laughs> yes. How does life at work look like? <laughs> hmm. So my worry was that if I would come back four days a week, I would just pick up where I left. And because I don't mm. remember what I would, was doing, I, you know, that I would just pick up the standard stuff and then automatically fall back in what I was doing before without considering, okay, but wait a minute, I'm going to work less. So actually something needs to go away or it should look different basically. Um, so I decided to go back full time and I'm now still working full time to see, okay, what does full time look like? Because I'm a little bit disconnected with work. Let's pick up full time eh, how it was. And then after that judge, okay, this is what I've been doing now for five days. Uh, I'm going to go back now to four days, take the ouderschapsverlof, which I'm doing as of next month. But then I can do a better assessment. Okay, five days versus four days. These are maybe the projects or tasks. I agree with the manager uh, that we can uh, say goodbye to or say no to or prioritize differently within the team because I will make the shift from five to four more consciously as well. Yeah. No, that's, that's brilliant. Because something I hear a lot of moms, <clears throat> excuse me, complaining, not complaining, but noticing is that they're going back to work they're working they're working 80 percent of the time they're being paid 80 percent of the pay but they still have 100 percent of the responsibility from before so i think that using or implementing in your strategy and seeing how that goes it's a very great tip for moms going back to work who still want to take advantage of the outer shops for loaf but mm -hmm. just Maybe not right away. Yeah, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you tip. Uh, you like the tip, <laughs> and you have, of course, the right to the ouderschaps for love until uh, your child is eight years old. So mm. don't worry that the right will be deleted or that you are and uh, you cannot make use of it anymore. You can always make use of it. Um, uh, but also maybe explain to your line manager that hey, I'm coming back. I'm considering to work f four days, but I'm I'm not sure yet. So I will just pick up as normal, and then we'll see. I think that's already good to give them a heads up so they can start planning for it uh, as well. But yeah, you're you're you have a right to it, so you can start uh, whenever you like. Yeah. Um. Well, before we end the video, is there any other tip or any other? Anything that you want to leave with the audience, or have we left it all already out there? Is there? Well, there's of course many more tips to do, but um, I think practice. When we go back to the interview tips, practice mm -hmm. as well with someone uh, that you know, especially in the beginning part about how to introduce yourself. Yeah. Practice that with someone you know, because that person will be able to tell if that's really you, or if you could loosen up a little bit and also the, the introduce yourself try to keep it as well about you as a human as a person not just you at the work it can be yeah. it can coexist together <laughs> you can tell them about your personal life your hobbies what you love to do outside of work it's actually very healthy <laughs> so do that um, and also uh, try to ask them questions because it's not just you that should be happy that a company hires you 
your company should also be happy about you because you bring talent, you bring experience, you bring uh, a lot of time. We spend actually more time with our colleagues than some of our family members, to be honest. So you're, you're investing as well a lot in the company. Eh? So try to ask them uh, about what they do, what is the values that are important, how they are developing uh, people, how they are investing in people, uh, that kind of a thing, and then try to see if that's a match from your end as well, because from both parties it needs to match the expectations and not just the company that uh, um, uh, you need to be happy with the company, the company needs to be happy with you uh, as well, mm. definitely. Yeah. Can I ask one last question yes. and then we will let you go back to your baby? Yes. <laughs> go back one house further. <laughs> it's not, it's yeah, not a long journey. But no. hey, um, my question is, as somebody who doesn't speak Dutch, mm -hmm. is it fair if I am accepting a job in the Netherlands um, to ask for the company to pay for the Dutch lessons? Mm -hmm. That's, I think it's a very good point. Uh, we uh, do that as a company, mm -hmm. uh, as part of the ongoing training, learning, development. So I think definitely fair uh, to ask the company that. And I think it also shows that you're here in the Netherlands, you're here to stay, you're willing to invest in your long-term future in the Netherlands, but mm -hmm. might actually send a good signal. And if you get no, it's a no. Uh, but at least uh, you have tried and, uh, and and otherwise you can see what are the other training, learning and development opportunities that they have besides from the Dutch classes, if that's no match, to see where you can uh, then get your uh, in development from. Yeah, yeah, but we, we do it, to be honest. Yeah, 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 I think it's very good. It's a reasonable. Yeah, reasonable it's a advice. very reasonable, yeah, yeah and, and, and even though it's a multinational company, some things will still be in Dutch just because it's automatically and yeah, not on purpose just automatically like that so uh, to be very inclusive for everyone i think it's important if uh, dutch uh, you can at least understand some basics yeah makes sense yeah all right Peter, thank you so much thanks You're for coming welcome. over thank you guys for I coming you over liked it. please yeah let us know if you also have other questions happy to help there's of course so much we can address in that short amount of time yeah but maybe if there's a whole bunch of questions, would you be willing to come back for a part two? If people like it. <laughs> part two. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys know now. Make sure you yeah. give this video a lot of thumbs up for Tirosh. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. I was a bit nervous, though, so I hope I did well. You did it. I mean, you were a pro. Yeah. I was watching it in the camera. I'm like, she. <laughs> you should be on TV. Like, you should, <laughs> should have my own show. <laughs> yeah. Or a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> cool. Okay, well you guys, thank you so much for coming over. Thanks a lot for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click that notification bell since that's now really important in YouTube world. And we will see you in the next one. See you later. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>